off, we're going to start off with Hermine Hopperhead. Now, I saw this game back in high school, totally forgot about it, forgot the name. Uh, years later, uh, John Riggs gave me a game fan magazine, went through the magazine, and in the import section, there was the game, and I remembered it immediately. So I want to give a shout-out to John Riggs. Thanks a lot for that game fan magazine, buddy. So when you pop this game in, you're pretty much rewarded with a cartoon cutscene to kind of introduce you to the story. Now, as far as the story goes, I mean, it's pretty simplistic. You can pretty much see in the intro what's happening. Uh, Hermione is walking around. He's digging through some garbage, getting into a little bit of trouble, probably. So this game pretty much kind of reminds me of Super Mario Brothers in a way. Um, how Mario pretty much, you know, went through a pipe, uh, ended up in the Mushroom Kingdom, yada, 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 and all that good stuff. Hermione ends up finding an egg, and through a discovery with the egg, he ends up going to another world, but it's it, this, is the, this is where it gets gross, but it's funny. He ends up going through a trash can, and that's how he goes to the world. So uh, when you see a trash can in this game, they're pretty much kind of like, I would say, underground warp zones and everything. Just like in the way of Super Mario Brothers, but I haven't ran into any that'll like transfer you to a, a, another level. They're usually there for like secret areas that you go to. And here's the world map. It kind of reminds me of Mario 3. So as you progress through this, you'll go to different levels and you'll kind of like uh, clear out areas on the map. One of my favorite things about the game is actually the music. Uh, the music is pretty catchy, upbeat, and it keeps you pumped up, makes you want to keep progressing. The only downside is, and I heard people say this before, is that the music is pretty much repetitive. Like it plays all the time the same song. And um, I, don't, I don't think that'll throw people off, but it, the game is really upbeat. So I can kind of understand why like, maybe they didn't have a big massive soundtrack, maybe um, budget cost or whatever. So they say, hey, we got this catchy tune. Let's just use it on the game and uh, hopefully people won't notice. <laughs> You'll notice, but like I said, it's not a bad thing. Uh, the game is actually like really, like I said, it's really upbeat and the song is really catchy. And like I was saying earlier, you collect the eggs and you follow them to the end of the level. Actually, as I was playing through the game, I didn't realize that you got, you seem like you could level the eggs up somehow by giving them stars. I didn't know that until later on. But when you get to the end of the level, your your uh, giant egg will hatch, and that's when you kind of like uh, can spread out the stars you collected throughout the level to the eggs that you have. Now, the levels so far that I've seen, they're not very long. I mean, I would say probably uh, they might take a minute to get through, uh, depending uh, on your if it's your first time or not. But they're really fun, and they change things up, so they don't ever really feel repetitive or anything like that. But um, I'm not trying to say this game is a copycat of Mario Brothers, but um, this would be pretty much the equivalent of Super Mario Brothers on the PlayStation as this game right here. So if you're a fan of Mario Brothers, I think you would definitely like this game. The only uh, thing is that... Um, you don't, from what I've seen so far, you don't get any power-ups. The only thing you could really do is hop on your enemies, and that's how you, um, you pretty much defeat them. Uh, no power-ups or anything like that. You're pretty much trying to avoid enemies in this game. So Hermione Hopperhead is definitely a game I think uh, is worth having in your collection. Uh, it doesn't go for a lot of money. You usually see copies of this game going for around $20, and that's, that's totally a fair price. The game actually would have came out to Sony PlayStation in America, but for some reason... Sony of America just had a, uh, this thing against 2D games. Like they thought the 2D games made their system look bad. So um, it was very hard to get them pushed um, to come out over here in America. But even so, guys, it's available and definitely worth having. I'm having a good time with it. I'm glad I popped this game in again. And I'm going to try to beat it pretty soon. All right, so the first game I'm going to talk about is Mirai Shonen Conan. For the PC Engine Super CD-ROM. Mirai Shonen Conan literally translates to Future Boy Conan and was one of those animes that came out way back in the 1970s. And uh, funny thing about this one is that it's got designs by uh, Hayao Miyazaki. This is probably one of the first things that he worked on back in the day. Conan the PC Engine follows the story of the anime pretty closely with the setting being set in a post-apocalyptic world. I've seen the entire anime and it's a lot of fun. You could actually watch the whole thing on YouTube if you want. Future Boy Conan on the PC Engine is a fairly straightforward action game. You got some really beautiful colors, some really nice parallax scrolling. Uh, I definitely think that this is a game that's especially fun if you're a fan of the anime. But if you're not a fan of the anime, it's still a fun game to play and fairly straightforward. Sure, there are times where Japanese would help so that you can understand what the story is about. But if you go and watch the anime and then play the game, you won't be lost at all. 
and many of the scenes are really nice colorful recreations of what you saw in the anime. Another thing about this game that makes it so great is that it's cheap. You can usually find copies of this game for 20 bucks or less, and at that price I think it's a steal. I think I even picked up a copy of this for Reggie. All in all, Future Boy Conan is a lot of fun to play and definitely a lot of bang for your buck. Definitely pick it up if you've got a PC Engine and you want a cheap, good game to play. Alright, so next up is Koro Koro Post Nin. Hopefully I said that right. I uh, probably didn't. But either way, this is a cool game. Uh, you play as Akane. Uh, she's a newspaper delivery girl. And um, the way you play the game is you don't really control her. You actually uh, rotate the screen and it helps her move around to deliver papers and everything. So it's very simple. You have a timer. Uh, uh, and pretty much it starts out pretty simple. You know, timer is simple and everything. But you have some obstacles that kind of that can kind of get in your way and uh, block you from delivering papers. After you deliver all the papers, you want to get back to the office and that's when the level is done. The game is actually really addicting and the animation looks great on the game. They did a good job on this. I believe this is what was a budget game uh, for PlayStation. It came out in 2003 for the PlayStation system. Um, and I haven't heard people really talk about this besides Kid Shuriken. So this is definitely a gem of a game to try out. Also, I want to note this game is very addicting. I only plan on playing for like maybe like 15, 20 minutes at first. End up playing for like two hours. So it's definitely one of those games that pulls you in. What really pulled me into this game though is this, I love sprite work. You know, you don't see enough of it uh, these days anymore. Uh, it seems like it. It almost seems like 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 it's a lost art, even though it's not. It just it, in, to, in today's age, it just seems like it's just, it's gone. Like you won't see too many developers make a game sprite based like this. One more thing before we close out, the game probably looks kind of confusing sometimes, like you might not know where to go, but you always have your map on the bottom right to let you know uh, where you need to deliver papers at and everything, so you kind of clear the map and then kind of get to your, your, your home base after that. After that's done, so you won't get lost even though it does look confusing. But anyways guys, that's all I got for this game, definitely pick this one up if you're interested. Alright, next we're going to give the Super Famicom some love with Gambare Daiku no Gensan. Now the name Gambare Daiku no Gensan uh, means something like Good Luck Gen the Carpenter. Uh, Gen being the name of the main character. In America we know this is Hammer and Harry and we got that in the arcades I believe and uh, possibly on the NES, I don't remember. But in Japan this game has many games on the Famicom, the Game Boy, uh, the Super Famicom and uh, then later on on the PSP which we actually got in America as well as Hammer and Hero. And much like many of the other Gensan games, Gen on the Super Famicom does not disappoint. It is a top-notch action game. So much fun, super colorful, great music. These really are the game aesthetics that I go gaga over. And smashing everything with your hammer in this game is just super satisfying. Uh, there are a few different stage types, like there's a stage where you're riding on this motorcycle and beating up on enemies, or a scooter, and um... Then the rest of them are just like platforming action stages. You can also climb on walls and fences and stuff. Uh, the game is just super fun. I bought this loose in Japan for like 10 bucks. I couldn't believe it. But if you don't mind getting a loose copy of the game and uh, you're just looking to play it and get into a game that's super fun, definitely pick it up because you can still pick up loose copies for a pretty good price. All right, so here is the adventures of Little Ralph. Um, this game, I'm not, I kid you not, is probably my favorite platform of all time. This game pretty much takes everything that's good about platform games and just adds all the great ideas and puts them into this game. It's it's so freaking cool. I mean, I, 
I can't say enough about this game. I actually did a review on this game, and the footage you're seeing here is actually from my review. Uh, was the captured footage for it, I went to look for my memory card, and I couldn't find the right memory card. I, just, I don't know where it's at, where I beat the game at, so... I had to use the footage from my old review for this video, which looks pretty ancient right now, but still, uh, I, I think I captured some good footage for you guys. Anyways, going to the game, you play as Ralph, who actually gets, he's actually a young man but that gets turned into a little kid, and uh, he's trying to save his girlfriend, uh, I think her name is Luisia, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird name to pronounce, but um, she gets kid kidnapped, and you end up trying to, to go save her. Now, you, you at, at, in the beginning of the game, you're, Ralph is a kid, and uh, later in the game, you actually uh, become a, an adult again, and you have to fight some bosses that way. When you get to those segments in the game, it pretty much plays like a Street Fighter game, like a two-button Street Fighter game. And it's actually pretty awesome. Very unique idea that they threw in here. But when you start this game, you actually want to turn the game on to normal because the game is on easy mode. And if you play the game on easy mode, the game kind of ends abruptly. So um, you'll fight. Yeah, it just has like a like this premature ending pretty much. And you won't get to the boss fights where the game plays like a Street Fighter game, which is what you're seeing right now. I found these fights to be, um, I, I honestly thought they were pretty easy, but that might be, be because I'm, I'm pretty like familiar with fighting games, so uh, I don't know if it'll be like that for everybody, but once you get the moves down, it's pretty easy. It's very universal in the way of like Street Fighter uh, with the controls and everything, so half circles and uppercuts and all that good stuff. All that, all that stuff will pull off some kind of move here for you guys to try out. The game does get a lot harder uh, as you progress, and I'm not kidding, guys. You, I mean, it's gonna take somebody who is an expert. Oh, well, I won't. I don't want to say an expert, but just is like, is not afraid of failure. You know, you're gonna die a lot in this game, and to get killed in this game, you only have to get hit up to two times to die, and depending if you get the shield or not. So. Um, it, it almost like has one hit kills if you don't get the shield or, or I think it's a shield or some kind of item I can't remember what it was but uh anyways the game is if you get killed in this game you, it's pretty much your mistake it's not because of gameplay the game is well put together a lot of fun very entertaining the music is on par I mean I'm telling you guys I was sucked into this game and I think I re it was a couple years ago when I beat it and it just like I was like just really enjoying myself I really wanted to beat the game but once you get close to the end, guys, it gets tough. It's like a, the last level is like a gauntlet and all the traps and puzzles and bosses you fought are coming up again. So, yeah, just be aware of that. All right, guys. So I know the game is pretty pricey for a physical copy. So what I would recommend is go the digital route for this one. It's a lot cheaper. And as far as I know, it was still on the PSN in Japan where you could download it for 600 yen, I believe. Um, but I'm not sure if the PSN has pulled a lot of their stuff like Xbox has off of their stores. So just be aware of that. By the way, uh, Adventures Little Ralph is a solid game. Uh, definitely a must have uh, if you enjoy a platform game with a little mix of uh, a verse fighting in it. This game is just, this is the best game in the world, damn it. Next, we're gonna talk about Cyborg 009 on the Mega CD. So the game Cyborg 009 on the Mega CD is one of those games that's based on like an old manga uh, or anime. This, I think, is based on the 80s version of this show by the same name. I saw the show that was like late 90s, early 2000s, but all the characters are the same. The story is fairly the same, so it, it doesn't really matter. And uh, even if you haven't seen the anime, you can really totally enjoy this game because it's, it's just an action game, straightforward. Now, for an action game, it's it's really good stuff. It's super fast-paced, uh, easy to get into, very simple gameplay. I really enjoy the uh, character's ability to like dash and double jump in the game, and uh, it's it's mostly projectile firing. You don't actually have an attack other than your gun, and you just shoot stuff. Uh, the action is super fast-paced. I really like the second stage. There's like a highway stage where you're running like super fast, and then at the end of the stage, you're you're fighting these two robots, and uh, it's just really cool and fast-paced. I, I like it a lot. The music, on the other hand, isn't something that's super memorable, uh, but it does really fit. It does sound like something that you would hear on those old anime shows, you know, or superhero anime stuff, uh, but it isn't like super memorable stuff that you're going to go bump in your car, you know? Now, I, I will say this about the game. It's hard as balls. Like, I haven't beat this game yet. I got maybe, like, halfway through before I was just like, screw it and gave up, right? But, I mean, at some point, I'll go ahead and go back and play it. And hopefully I can beat it <laughs> at some point. Um, but 
e even so, I still really would recommend this game. I, I love it a lot. It's it's. It's a lot of fun. It's straightforward 2D action. Uh, the only shitty part about this whole thing is that it, it, it only works with uh, Japanese Mega Drive system. So obviously if you have an American uh, Sega CD, you're not going to be able to play it. But there are some ways around it. Like you could always patch the game and uh, put it on a disc and play it on your US system. That way if you're savvy, um, there's always emulation as well. Um, or there's other systems like that Polymega thing that's coming out soon that'll be able to play all regions, no problem. And uh, I'm really excited for that. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, all I have to say about Cyborg 009. If you see it out there in the wild it isn't super expensive so i would go ahead and pick it up if you're you have a way to play it rapid angel is a game i found out by chance actually uh when i was in the hunt for looking for uh, platform games i might not have played i actually typed this on the internet and it actually came up on the psn as, that you could download it on the psn I looked at the gameplay and I said, you know what, this is definitely a game I want to have a physical of. And at the time that I bought this game, it was really cheap, thankfully. Now, I haven't got that far in this game. I've, I've gotten about to the fourth level in it. But uh, up until that point, I really enjoyed this game. I was having a great time with it. I actually just died and that's why I had stopped playing it at the time. But what I played up to, I was really enjoying it. So you start off the game, you have three bombs, and you pick your character, of course. All of them have different like type of stats and everything. One to jump higher uh, power and speed and all that good stuff. Not only do you fight uh, regular enemies in this game, but you also fight like a mini boss before you get to the next area. Or just to finish the area off, you'll fight a regular boss. And as you can see here, there's a combo system, so you can do all kind of like cool moves and everything. The game seems to have a, a, a silly story to it, but of course... Since I can't read Japanese yet, you know, I I don't know what's really going on. But you don't really need to know what's going on. All you need to know is that the game is fun and it's entertaining. And by what you're seeing on the screen, you can kind of tell what's going on with the story and everything. I did notice the controls uh, feel kind of floaty in a way. Like there's maybe a slight lag. I was playing on original hardware, so um, I noticed that right away. But to be honest with you, it's not bad at all. It actually kind of fits this game. You know, the silliness in this game, the way the characters move around all goofy and everything. So uh, I guess I guess maybe they that, they did that on purpose. I don't know. But either way, it doesn't stop the game from being fun. Uh, definitely, I would say this is a worthy game to pick up if you're if you're into platform games. The fighting is a bit different as it's kind of like a beat 'em up in a way. Uh, plat I would call this maybe a platform beat 'em up type game. Maybe yeah, that'd probably be a good way to go with this game. The game actually has two different endings and they are decided on what you do on the first level. So if you do something cruel, um, you're going to get the, I would say, the premature ending or whatnot. Well, I won't say it's premature because you get it at the end of the game, but it kind of like when you get that ending, you kind of feel bad. Like, oh my God, I didn't know that I was going to do that. But um, I'll just say that. But it happens on the first level. If you attack something and it falls, you're pretty much going to get the bad ending. But either way, guys, it's a lot fun game. Definitely, I think it's worth the purchase. Check out Rapid Angel. Next up, a colorful and whimsical game on the Mega Drive, Magical Taruruto-kun. So, Magical Taruruto-kun on the Mega Drive was developed by Game Freak, the people who made the Pokemon games. Uh, the game itself is based on an anime and manga of the same name and is an action platformer on the Mega Drive that's pretty good, I might add. Taruruto Kun on the Mega Drive is a very nice action platformer game with lots of parallax, beautiful colors, pretty good music, and an overall feel good type of game. Right off the bat, you're thrown into a pretty cool fight in the school where this helicopter is just shooting up the building, and I just thought it was super cool. Uh, most of the boss fights are pretty cool, actually. I keep telling myself that I'm going to go back and watch the anime for this game, but I never do. Which 
it doesn't really matter because you don't have to watch the anime to know what's going on. I mean, I guess it does help with the backstory, but it's totally not necessary since the game is pretty easy to just jump into and play. I'm a big fan of the look of this game, and honestly, for the Mega Drive, it's just really colorful eye candy, and it's just, it's really nice to look at. The parallax is super nice, there's like 78,000 layers of parallax, well, maybe not that many, but there's a lot of layers of parallax, and it looks really good. I bought this game for around $30, maybe, and uh, it's going for about 35 bucks right now, maybe 40 bucks, and I think it's definitely worth the price of admission. So if you're looking for cutesy, colorful action platformer games on your Mega Drive that are a lot of fun, definitely check out Magical Taruruto-kun on the Mega Drive, because it's good. Chokusoku Grandal. Let's look at the intro. I had to show you guys that intro. I just love old school anime. It's just something about it, guys. It just gets me. But anyways, guys, so the game plays, like, uh, I would say, um, between Mega Man and Metroid. And when I say uh, uh, Mega Man, actually, um, if you remember the Mega Man ZX series, how the biometals were kind of like uh, how you could switch between them, uh, that's how it is in this game as well. Um, the anime that this game is based off of, uh, I watched back um, back when I was in high school. Really thought it was funny, really really enjoyable. But there are slight differences between the anime and this game, uh, being that the uh, you get different armors in this game, but in the uh, in the anime uh, she only gets one armor, and she being Hikaru, a young teenage girl that's trying to to actually uh, save her boyfriend, who gets kidnapped on the first level. Now, even though this game plays like a Castlevania uh, Metroid type game, um, the controls are, to me, they were very floaty and it was kind of like tough for me to get used to them. But I did and I still enjoyed the game a lot, but I just wanted to put that out there. You also have bomb attacks that you can use. I mainly would use them for a boss battle that you might not know how to do. Uh, boss patterns are usually pretty easy to follow, but I was still having trouble because the boss's meters are pretty large. So you got to put it in that work. And that's all right. The game actually rewards you. Uh, this is how they used to do it back in the day with animated cutscenes at the end of a level to kind of like flush out the story for you. So it's really nice to look at. Um, but most of these, I think they pull from the anime and just put them in the game. They might be slightly different, but that's okay. But where this game really shines at is the new armors you get as you go to the new levels. Uh, there's one armor that shoots out two, la two lasers and you can actually climb walls in, in this armor here. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. Though it's not going to win any awards, but still, it's a fun game to play. And definitely, I would say, if you're a fan of like Metroidvania type games, or not even Metroidvania, but just platforms in general, definitely, I would say this one's a go. Also, on a side note, I just want to let everybody know that you guys should definitely check out the anime for this for this game. Uh, the OVA is a lot of fun. It's called Hyperspeed Grandal. Uh, probably one of the first animes I saw when I was a teenager. And the dialogue, the English uh, dialogue, was just freaking hilarious. It, it'll just make you laugh. It's awesome. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for you on Hyperspeed Grandal or Chokuso Grandal. Um, fun game, definitely worth having. And I'll leave you with some gameplay.
Shadow Fantasia for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Now, um, a lot of you guys probably haven't seen this game that much. It came out uh, for the 360 in America only. Um, I thought it was actually going to come out for PS3 in America. It never did. I don't know what happened with the rights with that. Arc System just didn't pick it up or whatnot. But it's available on the PS3 in PAL territories, um, also in Japan. And I believe it's still available for the PSN network, uh, which is how it was first released in America. Now, it's a 2.5D game done by Arc System Works. You guys know them as the creators of the Guilty Gear series. Um, uh, Blast Blue, of course, is one of their latest releases, uh, new releases, that is. And they actually worked on a two Persona games. Now, uh, Battle Fantasia, 2.5D game. Uh, really looks like something out of a storybook, um, you know, uh, like storybook characters and everything, the way everything looks. But it's a fantastic looking game. And I, I would actually consider it more of a beginner fighting game for someone who wants to get just get into fighting games for the first time. Battle Fantasia is right up your alley. Uh, it's very sim simple, very easy to get into. Um, it's just really just, I would say, I don't want to say it's simplistic or anything like that, but it doesn't take that much skill to get into it. And it's just really... A charming looking game um, if you see this game out there in the wild I would say definitely pick it up for at, you know at least try it out I mean it may not be for the experts that are hardcore into fighting games but it definitely has something about this game that's really cool one thing I might throw you guys off about the game it does only have 12 characters in the game some people may think that's a bad thing I think it's great because the balancing in the game is like a pretty easy to have but uh, I guess that's up for the experts to judge on that but anyways guys you see Battle Fantasia out there, definitely give it a go. All right, so for my first game, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Asuka 120% Burning Fest Limited on the Sega Saturn. Asuka 120% Burning Fest for the Sega Saturn is a 2D all-female fighting game by Phil and Cafe. The Asuka series got its start way back in the day with the FM Marty, but it eventually made its way to home consoles like the PC Engine, the Sony PlayStation, and the Sega Saturn, which is the version we're looking at today. The Asuka games feature some really fast gameplay with things like dashes, double jumps, supers, special moves, cancels, and so much more. The gameplay for these games is really fast paced and a lot of fun. The graphics in the newer Asuka games, which are Burning Fest Limited and Burning Fest Final, share a very similar palette. And no matter which of the two versions you get, you're still going to get an excellent game, with Final on the PlayStation containing a few more characters and Limited on the Sega Saturn containing things like anime cutscenes. Some of the music tracks are pretty memorable, especially the cheerleader girls, Megumi. The Asuka series as a whole is a series that not too many people talk about, and I'm really hoping that more people will play it. It's a lot of fun, and you can still find cheap copies of this game on eBay depending on which version you get, especially if you get one of the older two PS1 versions of the game. So if your Sega Saturn or PlayStation are in need of some all-female 2D fighting action, definitely check out Asuka 120% Burning Fest. Alright guys, so the next game I want to talk about is Blade Arcus uh, from Shining EX. That's a weird name, but um, if you guys are familiar with the uh, Shining Force series, I believe these characters are based off of those characters, or it's like a spin-off story. Not really sure. Uh, I haven't played any of the new Shining Force games. I do have uh, the new Shining Force game, but I haven't completed it yet. Kind of plays like a Tales game. But anything, anyways, getting into this game, guys. This game is cool because it actually um, it mixes things up kind of like in a way where uh, you pick two characters, and for those two characters, you get to choose one for the battle. Now, after you win one round or lose a round, you you can either stick with that character or switch you to your other character. And that's that kind of like changes things up, mixes things up. If you're if you're not feeling a character for a fight, you can kind of change it up. I actually like that aspect of the game. Um, it really has that look of uh, kind of like Battle Fantasia. It's a 2.5D game, and the game is is really fast-paced action. Like it, it seems like you're able to do like all these really cool moves with a, like a push of a button. Well, that might be because I was actually playing on simple mode. I wasn't playing the regular mode. I was just kind of like mixing it up with the uh, simple mode at first. So that might be why the footage I'm making the footage kind of look so good. But uh, I am still getting used to the game. It, it has it, like 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 took my interest and everything. So I definitely think it's something you guys would like. But the unfortunate thing is that this game is only in Japan so 
But thankfully, uh, the systems that are is on PS3 and the PS4, and now that I hear it's on the Switch as well with a new upgraded uh, version of the game, um, it's region free, so you can play it anywhere. So uh, I say definitely give this game a go, guys. Um, I'm still learning it because it's it's really um, it's really Japanese heavy, so I'm not really I don't know what's really going on with the story and everything. But like I said, it's all about the fighting in this game. Uh, definitely check it out, especially if you're a Shining Force fan. All right, so since we're on the subject of portable fighting games, the next one I'm going to talk about is Super Chinese Fighter GB. The Super Chinese series by Culture Brain is a series of games that goes back to the days of the NES, with Kung Fu Heroes being the first Super Chinese game. But in Japan, the series is simply known as Super Chinese, with this one being Super Chinese Fighter. And I'm playing this copy of Super Chinese Fighter on the Super Game Boy so that I can capture the footage. The border is really cool though. But anyway, so the game has 12 characters that you can choose from. Uh, the main characters are Yu and Jack, and uh, the Princess Lin Lin, and a bunch of others from the Super Chinese series. One pretty neat thing is that before each match you can go ahead and pick a super move that your character can do during battle. And another cool little thing that you can do is this little roulette game. Before each round, it lets you get a special item that you can use in the match. For being a fighting game on the Game Boy, the game itself plays pretty well, with some pretty cool moves that all the characters can do. You have your fireball motions, your backward fireball motions, and things like that. Fairly typical stuff for any fighting game of that time, and this did in fact come out during the heyday of the 2D fighting game craze. Many of the cheap tune tracks that you'll find in this game are pretty memorable. I found myself humming a few of the tunes myself. The rest of the sounds are to be expected. You've got your bleeps and bloops that you normally get with Game Boy games. Super Chinese Fighter is a cute game with really awesome sprites and a cool fun little game that you can take with you on the go. It's still fairly cheap nowadays. So if you're a fan of the Kung Fu Heroes, Little Ninja Boy, or Super Chinese in general, I definitely recommend this game. You won't be disappointed if you're a fan. But I'd also recommend it if you're not a fan of the series and you just want a cheap 2D fighting action game that you can take with you on the go. Definitely take a look at it. You might enjoy it. So next up, I have uh, Blade Strangers. Now, Blade Strangers, uh, I want to get this out of the way. It's for the Switch and PS4, but I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, the PS4 version is kind of hard to find lo at local stores. And the reason that is, um, I guess they didn't really produce uh, a lot of PS4 copies. Uh, if you got one, if, if GameStop got one, uh, they would only get like one copy. I didn't see it at Best Buy or any other stores besides GameStop. They did have a lot of the Switch copies, but definitely you had to pre-order the, the, the PS4 copy. So I'm not saying it's rare as of right now, but it's on its way to being there because uh, the only way to get it easily is to probably get it offline uh, from Amazon uh, for the regular price. But anyways, going into the game, so Nicholas put this game together. Uh, some people call this an indie type fighting game. They got a lot of their, their, their games and they put a lot of the characters in here and they kind of like just made it like a battle royale. Um, it's a solid fighting game. Uh, I'm not very good at it, unfortunately. Uh, I, actually, I actually try to use a, 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 a gun vault, uh, but he doesn't seem like he's very good in the game, or maybe I just don't know how to use him. He's like a zone character, so he takes a little bit of getting used to, but the game actually looks pretty good. Um, actually, it doesn't look as good as I thought it would. Uh, I was actually playing it on my on my TV, and I looked at it, and some of the, the kind of the, the, the characters looked a little bit like um, they weren't HD, I would say. But other than that, though, the game still does look good. It still is very good looking. Um, just like I said, for me, it's very hard to get into because I'm just not good at it right now, but I'm still practicing. Um, but it has like characters like Shovel Knight, Isaac from The Binding of Isaac. He, yes, he's in the game if you, if you, if you played that game. So uh, definitely look out for this game, guys. It's, it's something I don't think you guys should miss. All right, guys, so the next game we have up is The Rumble Fish for the PS2. Now, this game was released in arcades, uh, ported to PS2 by Sega themselves. Um, there is a sequel to it called The Rumblefish Part 2. 
but that unfortunately never saw release on any consoles. Um, but what this game does have that compares to that one, it has two characters in the Rumblefish Part 2 that they added to this version of the game. So I that, thought that, that was pretty good that Sega did that. Now, the game has around 12 fighters, uh, and the character I use mostly is Zen because he's mostly the most rounded fighter in the game, I would say. Um, the game is a 2.5D game, and it, it's really it seems really simple and easy to get into. It's got a lot of cool flashy moves to it, but the game does seem kind of like, uh, what's the word I want to use for it? It does seem a little floaty. Not that that's bad or anything, but like I just noticed some characters, when you jump in the air, just kind of like, they kind of like float a little bit. I don't know. But other than that, though, uh, that's my only complaint about the game. It's not really a complaint. You know, the game is very solid, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to hunt it down. Um, I'm very interested in a lot of the um, the games that Dimps did because they're actually a really cool developer. They actually uh, helped develop the Sonic Advance games. If you guys enjoy the Sonic Advance games on the Game Boy Advance, they uh, had a part in that. But anyways, back to this game. Uh, do I think you guys should pick it up? Hell yeah! If you, I mean, for a good price, of course. Uh, I think I got my copy for around uh, twenty bucks. So if you have an import, a way to play imports on your PS2, definitely give uh, the Rumblefish a uh, go. Uh, I think you anyone would like it. And if you don't like it, well, that's too bad. And next up, we're gonna talk about Soko Setokai or Sonic Council on the Sega Saturn. So all I've got to say about Sonic Council on the Sega Saturn is that it's awesome. The game has some super tight controls and it's really fun to play. I think the game itself was based on a manga. Um, I could only find two volumes of this manga, so I don't know. I feel like it could have even been an anime. Anyway, so the game's got nine characters that you can choose from off the bat, and each character has their own special set of moves like any other fighting game. The gameplay itself is super tight. Uh, many combos in this game, uh, lots of things are chainable, supers are chainable, you can attain some really high hit combos, and the game is just flashy. Graphically, it's super nice, it's hand-drawn 2D animated sprites, lots of frames, the backgrounds are great, like this arcade background is awesome, I has like this whole like uh, Akuma thing going for her with that super move right there, and honestly, I don't really find any weak points with the game. Maybe a few more characters could have been good, but... Honestly, the game is, is, it feels really tight, the gameplay is great, the music is great, the art is, eh, the art is okay, some of their bug eyes kind of scare me, but it looks really crisp and clean, and it just plays so well. Speaking of the gameplay, you have all six buttons at your disposal, so it's laid out very much like Street Fighter, and it really plays a lot like Street Fighter. I think if I had to compare it to any Capcom game, it would probably play more like Capcom vs. SNK2 or something like that. I would have to say that Sonic Council is definitely a game that flew under the radar for a lot of people. I bought this game for about 40 bucks and this was a long time ago. You can probably still find copies for around 50, 60 dollars. That is until people wise up that it's a really good game and start buying it up. So if you have a Japanese Sega Saturn or a way to play Japanese Sega Saturn games, definitely go pick up this game before it gets super expensive. All right, and for my next game is one that I recently picked up at the Midwest Gaming Classic. That's Os Karatebu for the Super Famicom, and it takes place in Osaka. The name Os Karatebu translates to something like With Guts Karate Club or Go Karate Club, something along those lines. And the game is based on a manga and a four-series OVA of the same name. The story follows that of the main character Takagi, who's the captain of the Karate Club, and he is fighting to protect his turf, which is Osaka. Although the game is a 2D fighting game, it does play differently in a couple of aspects. Uh, for example, you don't get round one or round two, you just get one long ass round, and at the end of the round, you get a chance to actually get back up, similar to like boxing or wrestling, where you have up to the count of three to get back up. Well, in this game, you get like a spirit gauge, which is your key gauge. If you have enough uh, key, uh, you can resurrect yourself after you've been knocked down. But you could only do this twice. At the third time, you stay down for good. 
This game also does have a versus mode, which you can play all the characters that appear in the game. But once again, I had the most fun playing the story mode as it follows the story of Takagi and it plays everything out in this really nice sprite based manga looking panels like you would see in the comic books. And it just has some of the coolest sprite works that you'll see in any cinematic on the Super Famicom. One of the things that really impressed me about this game is how much digitized voice there is in the game. And that always impresses me with cartridges when they can do that. The sprite work in this game is really good. The characters look great, uh, nicely detailed, nice, great, big character sprites that I really like. It's just got this whole look that I really, really dig. The music itself is also pretty good and fitting for the game. If I had to nitpick one problem with this game is the very, very low frame rate of the game. The game seems to run at like 20 frames per second or something, and it seems to be a problem with any of the culture brain fighting games like SD, uh, Hiryu Noken, or the Super Chinese Fighter on the Super Famicom. They all just seem to have a really low frame rate for whatever reason. But aside from that, the game itself is really great, and I think it's a game that heavily fell under people's radar. At least up until recently, because complete copies of this game go for about 70 bucks and up. Although you could find loose copies of this game for about 10 or 20 bucks, I picked up this one for 10 bucks at MGC. Os Karatebu for the Super Famicom is one that I highly recommend. <laughs> Alright guys, so my last game on the list is Nitro Plus Blasters Heroines Infinite Duel for the PS4 system. Now, um, this game was released on the PS3 and I didn't have a PS4 at the time that this game got announced, so I was really like trying to find out information about it. And um if I found out that it was only coming out uh, to America on the PS4, so I eventually uh, got my PS4, and this was the first fighting game I got on the system, uh, even before Street Fighter V, which I still don't own uh, anymore. But anyways, um, this is a solid 2D uh, game, and um, it features uh, characters from Arcana Heart series, like uh, Heart herself. Uh, if you're familiar with the Fate Stay Night series, uh, it has Saber from that. Saber is my main character in the game. I really like how she plays a lot. But uh, one of the unique characters in the game, and she might be considered one of the weakest characters in the game, I don't really know, is Super Sonico. Uh, I actually like her because uh, I like cats, and she has all the cat attacks, like little four kittens that help her do different attacks on people. I thought that was a, made her a really cool, unique character. Um, I don't hear anybody talking about this game at all, really, which is pretty insane. Uh, and I do watch the fighting game like industry, and I see what what their kids are, the, well, the people are playing these days, and I hear nothing about this game. Now I don't know if they think the game is weak or not, or just like it's just not what they want. But this is a good fighting game, guys. It's very colorful and it's very animated. So I think it's definitely a game that it just kind of like maybe slipped past people's radar. So uh, it doesn't have that many characters. I think it had around like maybe ten characters in the game. But for me, I like a small roster because it means the game is more balanced. But uh, it's it, it's on the cheap too, guys. It goes for around ten bucks if you can find it at GameStop. Um, and it's gonna be one of those games that's gonna be hard to find because I don't know if it sold well or not. Um, but uh, this game just really caught my attention. Where you have characters have that use attacks with their cell phone. Uh, also, just to go into a little bit of gameplay as well, you get to choose uh, two tag team partners that you can use in the battle. So they kind of kind of like assist characters, I would say, that they come in and help you. And um, each time you use one, they have a meter that goes back up where you could chart where you could know if you could use them again. But guys, if you see this game, don't let the cover fool you. Uh, definitely give this game a go, especially if you're fighting game. If you like fighting games, definitely pick this one up. I don't think you'll be let down. So Galaxy Deca Gaiman on the PC Engine is a linear beat 'em up uh, with really bright character designs and uh, it's it's interesting it's pretty hard there's quite a learning curve but the cool thing is like these transformations that the characters get they turn into like these like power ranger type things um they're like powered suits because i guess they're like space police or something once you get the motions down and the move sets of the characters it starts to become a little easier and more fun to play in my opinion, it's more of an acquired taste. The more you play it, the more you like it. And I really like this game. But for someone who's playing it for the first time, they might find it a little hard and difficult to get into because of its difficulty level. 
the game does have a couple little extras like this fighting game mode uh, where you can play against your friend and pick some characters, including a couple random characters that you get to beat up on in the normal game. But um, after about five minutes or so, you'll, you'll probably get bored with this mode and go back to the regular game. In my opinion, the regular game is a lot of fun, especially if you play it with a friend. I think that's where you get the most enjoyment out of this game, is if you play it two players. If you find Galaxy Decagaivan in the wild, it might be worth picking up. I know I like it. Alright guys, so the first game I want to talk about on this list is Pooley Ruler. Uh, this is, as you can see, the PlayStation version. Uh, also available for the Saturn and FM Towns Marty, or whatever that system's called. But that version's really rare, so if you have that one, uh, holy grail. Uh, I played this game years ago when I was a kid, and I forgot what it was called over the years. And it wasn't until I saw Jimmy Hoppa's video about it that I remembered the game, and I immediately bought it after that. So basically, you play as Zack and Mel. Now, the characters pretty much look like a uh, well, little Bo Peep, if you remember that when you were a kid. Um, very fairy tale land looking. Um, basically, if you wanted to know a little story in the game, these kids uh, in their town, uh, the bad guy's taking the key to time. So all time is like kind of messed up, and you're trying to retrieve the key back and everything. So you're going through different towns at first in the beginning of the game. And then by the third level, the game gets uh, pretty weird and hilarious and, and so on until you just kind of get towards the end of the game again. I won't. I, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. I, I'll, I don't want to explain too much about it, but it gets really weird. So first two levels, very normal, but at third level, fourth, fifth, it gets kind of like, what the hell's going on here? But still a solid game. Uh, it's pretty much basic, though. Um, there's just attack, jump attack, and summons. Now, the summons work in different ways. Like, you got a level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, and level 5. You know, and, it, and different things come out. It feels like it's random, but, you know, depending on how you have it powered up, you'll get a different summon, usually. Um, the music in the game is pretty much um, just more, just, just pretty basic, you know, kind of uh, uppity in a way. Uh, game controls pretty well. It is fun. I would kind of say this game is more of a beginner uh, be beat em up game. It's very easy, but also just really weird. But still, definitely a game I think you guys should have in a collection. A total hit and gem. All right, so for my next pick, we're going to take it back to the Famicom days with Kunio Kun. It's a really long title. Let's just say Kunio Kun in Feudal Japan. Alright, so I guess for those of you out there who actually want to go look for the game, the name is called Downtown Special. Kunio Kun no Ji Dai Geki Dai Yo Zen In Shugo. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of words. That's why I was just calling it Kunio Kun in Feudal Japan. But they're not really in Feudal Japan. It's like a school play that they're doing, and they're just beating the crap out of each other in school, which is what you do in Japan. In any case, for those of you who are not familiar with the Kunio Kun series, this is pretty much River City Ransom set in feudal Japan. So if you're familiar with River City Ransom, then you already know how to play this game pretty much. Uh, but it's pretty cool because the setting is different. Uh, the music is very Japanese-y uh, compared to the River City Ransom games. And I enjoy this series a lot. In my opinion, I think Technos Japan pretty much is the grandfather of beat-em-ups with this series. And this is just one of those that just never made it out of Japan because of how japanese it is. But I seriously recommend getting it if you have a Famicom and you can find this on the cheap. Um, there is a more accessible way to play this game now. Thankfully, if you have a Nintendo Switch, you could buy Kunio Kun The World, which is a collection of all the Kunio Kun games, and this is one of the games that's included in that collection. So that's cool. This Kunio game is just a lot of fun, especially if you're playing it with a friend, and I highly recommend it if you're a fan of the series. Alright guys, so next up we have Crisis Beat. Crisis Beat came out in 2000, and it's a shame this game didn't come out to America. Um, I, I, I kind of see why it didn't, maybe because they probably didn't think it would sell well because uh, a lot of 3D beat-em-ups weren't being made at the time, and then one, the ones that did come out, I don't know if it, they really did really well. Like Fighting Force, I don't think it did well. It sold okay, but it, didn't, it was kind of panned in a way. But anyways, um, this is a 3D beat-em-up, and it's pretty amazing. It's fast-paced. Uh, you're constantly moving around to different areas. Um, it's it actually it's really fun to play. Uh, so the story it has a little story to it. Like basically, no one cares, but I do a little <laughs> terrorist on a ship, uh, nuclear weapon or whatnot. I can't really think that's what it was. And you're trying to like survive as uh, one of four characters. Um, the game is two players at the same time, so you can drop in any time and join a friend. Fast-paced action, 
catchy music, even though the music kind of re like repeats itself over all the time. But it's just like what a beat em up should be. Fast paced action. You're not staying in one area fighting too many enemies for a long time because that gets boring. You're constantly moving to different areas, so you feel like you're actually flowing along the level. Like it's like you're moving along. You're seeing different parts of the level. Very fun game, guys. I would say uh, if you if you pick up Crisis Beat. Uh, it's definitely a game that you would want to add to your collection. It's a lot of fun. It's just, this is what a 3D uh, beat em up should be. All right, for my next one, I got to go back to the PC Engine with some Anesan. Now, Anesan for the PC Engine is a pretty unique beat em up, and uh, we'll talk about why. So, one of the things that makes Anesan interesting is that it's an all female beat em up game, but what makes it unique is its whole girl boss biker gang theme that it's got going for it. Otherwise known as the Bosozoku subculture in Japan, or Yankees. But long story short, you're this girl boss named Ai who's being accompanied with two of her friends from childhood and you basically go around the country beating up on other girls, trying to look for the original girl boss who went missing. The game plays pretty well if you're using Ai, but if you're using any of the other girls, mm, some girls are much less playable than others. One of the cool things I like about this game is that you get to recruit some of the other girl bosses if you meet certain criteria or buy certain items which you can usually buy in a shop between stages. Another thing you can do in this game between stages is play something called the Ugly Face Grand Prix, which is a contest to see which girl can make the ugliest face. <laughs> Pretty scary, right? There's also a cool bike riding mini game that you can play, and then when you go to the next stage you get to sleep, which shows like this really crazy like psychedelic image each time, displaying eyes dreams, which is just weird. I think that people doing the visuals for this game were high or something. But one of my favorite features of this game that I really need to talk about is this game's soundtrack. It's got this awesome rockabilly soundtrack that is just awesome. And some of you might even recognize the music from this game. Anasan on the PC Engine is one of my favorite beat em ups for so many reasons, but this game is definitely shooting up in price, so if you see it decent anywhere, definitely grab it. Alright, so next up we have a hot blooded family. Uh, this was actually a launch title for the PlayStation in Japan when it came out in 94. Now, due to Sony's policy about 2D games in America, they would not let this game come out to America, so uh, I found out about this game by chance uh, a few years ago, and I thought it was pretty amazing, but I want to tell people that if you pick up this game, if you have a Saturn, the Saturn version is probably slightly better than this one. Uh, this one has a little bit of slowdown. Well, not a little bit. It has a lot of slowdown, especially when you do uh, like your, your special attacks, but still definitely worth having a PlayStation version. It's still good. Uh, I like this game because like it, it, it it's kind of unique in a way. So here's the thing. like You know how in beat-em-up games, like you, you knock over barrels, you get items to, to, like, to help you like replenish your health or get points with? Well, the game went did this, so there's a certain situation where uh, you could knock a barrel over and there's a beer on the on the ground. Now, depending on the character you're using, you can't pick up the beer and use it as health because they're underage, so it's for adults only. So only one of the characters could actually drink the beer in the game and, and replenish their health. The other kids, like are teenagers, they can't pick it up. So I thought that was pretty funny they added that in. But um, it's a simplistic uh, fighting beat em up game, I would say, uh, kind of like uh, like a maybe like a step. A little above Final Fight in a way. Uh, you know, the special moves are actually pretty cool, and the animations are well done for the game as well. Uh, Music-wise, um, 
Uh, it has some catchy tunes, probably by the third level, I would say. I think that had a catchy tune to it. Control-wise, with the slowdown a little bit, it could kind of mess things up, but it still feels comfortable, like you're really in control of your character. Um, and it's a lot of fun. But I would say, honestly, if you want to get this game, definitely try to pick up the Saturn version over the PlayStation version, because that version, just they just polished that one a little bit more. This game might have been rushed, um, in a way. I'm, maybe I'm, I'm wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it was rushed, because they didn't know how to really utilize the PlayStation back then when it first came out. But anyways, hot-blooded family, guys. Definitely check this one out. All right, and finally, we're going to talk about Ikitosen, Eloquent Fist for the PSP. Ikitosen! Ikitosen is a video game that's based on an anime by the same name and is loosely based on female versions of Chinese warlords or something like that. As soon as you get the game going you've got a story mode and an arcade mode and uh, basically the story mode lets you play three different scenarios with uh, different teams of people and then the arcade mode is just straight beat em up style. Now the story mode is really only interesting if you're into the story of the anime otherwise you're probably just better off playing the arcade mode. The game does have a few pervy bits here or there and there are some jiggle mechanics but if you can get past that or it doesn't really bother you there is a pretty fun beat em up game to be had here. The graphics are fairly nice and as far as beat em ups go it feels really satisfying to play with things like super moves and combos and all sorts of stuff. Not only does Ikitosen have a ton of characters that you can play right off the bat, there are unlockable characters as well. Another good feature about this game is that your characters level up the more you play them. Even though this game is a beat em up, there are hundreds of characters on screen and sometimes it just feels like I'm playing a Dynasty Warriors game. Which is kind of ironic because this game has a lot of characters that are based on the same historical figures as that game did. The music in this game fits, but it isn't exactly memorable. I didn't find myself humming any of these tunes after I was done playing it. But mediocre music and jiggle physics aside, this game is a pretty decent game that might have slipped under the radar for a lot of people. If you have a PSP, it might not be a bad idea to pick it up. I certainly enjoy it. All right, guys, the last game I want to show you guys is uh, Panzer Bandit for the PlayStation. Uh, if you ever played um, Guardian Heroes for the Sega Saturn, uh, you know what to expect with this game. I mean, this game is just, this is what a beat-em-up should be like. Uh, pretty much, this is a 2D beat-em-up, and basically uh, there's two planes. You could There's a front plane and there's a background plane you could jump into and fight enemies as well, so things don't get all confusing with this game. Um, I don't know the story because the game is in full Japanese, but um, I'm sure there's a translation out there. But... When you play this game, you're just going to be all about the action. It's just like really easy to get into, uh, easy to learn combos, like button combinations. Like there's your regular attack. I think there's a, your hard attack and then there's like a special attack you know, to do like certain special moves and everything. And you can actually mix them up in combinations uh, and, you know, by pressing down, down and, and then the attack button, you might do like an uppercut. Uh, you could do something else as well. It's just, I love how they you could chain moves together in this game. The music is very catchy. Uh, the game is easy to look at. I love the sprites that they used in this game. Um, I actually heard this game was supposed to be for the um, the sharp, uh, that sharp computer thing. I forgot what it was called, but since that kind of went out of out of business, whatever, they ported it to PlayStation. But seriously, um, we're, we will never get another game like Panzer Bandit. Um, I'm telling you guys, definitely take a look at this one. Hopefully it's available on PSN or something like that. Um, I know the, the regular game is a little bit more expensive now. Um, but seriously, you owe it, if you're a beat em up fan, you owe it to yourself to check this game out. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
the slap happy rhythm busters and the slap happy rhythm busters um this game i found out by chance a few years ago and gosh this game is a total hidden gem guys seriously uh think about a fight versus fighting game mixed with a little bit of a maybe a ddr <laughs> so that's how this game is it's got actually a really cool soundtrack to it lots of cool characters to choose from and it plays like more like a slow paced street fighter game in a way because of the way the 3d graphics are in a way um, but what I really like about it is they, the way they implement the dancing into the game. Well, so basically, plays like any traditional averse fighting game. Uh, you have your your half circle, quarter circle type moves that you could do. Uh, but to pull up a special move uh, towards the end, uh, you have to do a, a sequence of a. First, you have to set the trigger, and once you set that and hit the opponent, then you, you're set with a sequence of a, a button presses that you have to do. Now, if you get all of them right. Uh, you actually will pull off uh, a special move. And it, it's just really cool how, how it plays out. Uh, Total Hidden Gem, it should have came to America, but unfortunately, the reasons why, uh, maybe, there's a, probably a lot of reasons why this didn't come to America. Uh, it was released late in the PlayStation's life cycle and also um, music rights and all that type of stuff. But uh, if you pick up Slap Happy Rhythm Busters and you're a fighting game fan, you definitely will not be let down. Uh, the version I have here is the regular edition. There is a Greatest Hits version. So maybe that version might be cheaper now. It's gone up over the last couple of years. I got this game when it was 30 bucks, so I was very lucky. But anyways, guys, definitely check out Slap Happy Rhythm Busters. You will not be let down. So the first game I'm going to talk about is a PC Engine game. I love the PC Engine, and this is Flash Hiders for the PC Engine Super CD-ROM. The PC Engine doesn't have a whole lot in the way of original fighting games, but Flash Hiders is definitely one of the best of the original fighting games that came out for the PC Engine. When you first boot the game, you're greeted by a few different modes. You've got Scenario Mode, which is basically your Story Mode, you've got Versus Mode, and you've got Advanced Mode. Uh, Advanced Mode is kind of like a build your own character type thing where you fight in a tournament for money uh, so that you can buy different attributes for your character and in my opinion adds a pretty good amount of depth to the game. I first played a demo of this game back in 1994 and I remember thinking to myself how fast paced the fighting action was. Uh, especially back then there weren't a whole lot of fighting games that had these uh, crazy super fast uh, super techniques. Though I suppose Art of Fighting would come to mind when I think of those super fast super moves or Fatal Fury 2 with uh, Kim Kaplan's like super kick thing. Supers in this game or special moves in this game are, are very similar. One thing that's highly recommended is that you have the six button controller to play this game because the game is very much like Street Fighter 2 where you have uh, three punches and three kicks, uh, low, medium, and high. So definitely get yourself either a Hori Fighting Commander or an NEC Avenue 6 pad to enjoy the game to the fullest. And if you have an arcade card, the loading time in the game will be cut down drastically. And I mean pretty much non-existent loading times between battles, which is really nice for a CD-based game. On top of all that, Flash Hiders isn't even an expensive game. You can usually get it anywhere between 25 and 30 bucks on eBay. Uh, which is a pretty good price for this game in my opinion. I like it a lot. Definitely pick it up if you have a PC Engine. Uh, next up we have Fist of the North Star. Uh, Fist of the North Star for the PS2 is uh, was actually created by Arc Systems. They made this fighting game. And if, you, if you're familiar with Arc Systems, you know about the Guilty Gear series, Blast Blue, and so on. Um, they really put their heart into this game. I mean, seriously. I've watched the anime and I pretty much know at least the first season in and out and the characters in this game are so freaking cool. Now this game, the one of the, I would say the only bad thing about this game it would, would be considered bad these days. If you wanted to play this game as a tournament game, you couldn't because characters are OP in this game. Like, if, I mean, if a character is strong in, this, in the animated series, he's going to be strong in this game. And if a character is weak in the animated series and he's on this game, he's going to be, he's going to be weak in this game and he's going to have a hard time against other characters. But either way, that's okay. You can figure a way around it. Game is a lot of fun. Uh, I love playing as Ken and Toki. Those are my favorite characters. Uh, Ken can even do the death touch, which uh, gives you like three, ten seconds to live in the match, which is hilarious. Um, just just a really well put together game. I, I wish this game got a wider release, but unfortunately it's only in arcades and on the PS2 in Japan. 
but it's still pretty cheap. I think the game goes for like $40 or $50. It's definitely worth having in your collection, um, especially if you like the Fist of the North Star series. Uh, definitely pick this one up. Speaking of Arc System Works, the next game we're going to talk about is Sengoku Basara Cross for the PlayStation 2. Now, Sengoku Basara Cross is actually a spin-off of the original Sengoku Basara series. The original Basara games are a tactical action type game. They're very similar to the Dynasty Warriors games, if you've ever played any of those, uh, or you're just killing a bunch of different people. Now, this game is a 2D action fighter that's developed by Arc System Works. So it's very similar to like Guilty Gear or the Fist of the North Star game that Reggie just showed us. So the visuals are really clean and I really like it. It's, it's a really crisp visual style. The gameplay is uh, very similar to all of the other Arc System Works games where you've got like your three attack buttons and uh, you have aerial attacks and whatnot. Uh, but the one thing that this game does differently is it has something called the Engun system. So every team has uh, assist characters. Some have two, some have one, and some have none, but that really just depends on how strong that character is. Sengoku Basara Cross is still fairly cheap and it's an awesome game in my opinion. If you're a fan of fighting games or Guilty Gear or Blaze Blue or any of that stuff, definitely pick up Sengoku Basara Cross for your PlayStation 2. Alright, so uh, Angel Eyes is a game I found out by chance, so I was looking for um, 2D fighting games for PS1, maybe something that I might have missed in the past, because I found out about Slap Hip Happy Rhythm Busters and, and quite a few others. So Angel Eyes came up, and I looked at it, I was like, wow, man, animation is really good. This game really shows what the PS1 could really do. Um, I mean, a, a lot of people had a hard time or said it was hard to make 2D animation games for the PlayStation, but if you knew the tricks around it, you could make a solid game. I mean, look at Street Fighter Alpha 3. I mean, that game looks great, and if you know what they did to put that together, uh, you would say, wow, the PlayStation is capable of a lot of stuff. And and here's a game, Angel Eyes, pretty much. Angel Eyes, from what I see, I think it's like high school girls fighting each other. It's like kind of like um, uh, Arcana Heart, if you remember that game. But it's a solid game, guys. Definitely uh, is one you want to check out. Uh, good music, um, fun using characters. I, what I like, what I like about the characters in this one is when you, when you, uh, when you're about to fight, when it says round one fight, the characters actually jump at each other. You could jump in the air and just do like a, com a combination attack right when the match starts. So that's a really cool feature they added in this game. But uh, definitely pick this one up if you have the chance. So now that we're on the subject of all female fighting games, let's talk about Advanced VG, a fighting game that features waitresses. That's right, waitresses. Now, Advanced VG2 or Advanced Variable GO2 is definitely a lot more well-rounded fighting game compared to its first game. If you want to find out more about that, make sure to check out my channel for the review on the first game. And I'll also have a full review of this game a little bit later. What can I say about Advanced VG2? The game might have a quirky premise with battle waitresses fighting over who gets prize money or what have you, but silly plot points aside, the game is a lot of fun to play. Much like all the other games that we talked about here, the gameplay mechanics for Advanced VG2 are pretty deep. You'll find many of the same things that you'll find in other fighting games like supers and cancels and dashes and all of that other stuff. All of that stuff is new to this version of the game since the first version was really bare bones. For being a 2D sprite based fighting game on the PlayStation 1, they did a really good job with the character animations. Graphics are crisp and fluid, and the loading time isn't too terrible. Advanced VG2 is one of those games that is slowly climbing in price, so I highly suggest you go and pick it up if you want to play it before it gets too expensive. <laughs> Okay, so next up we have Spectacle vs. Generation. And I believe this is actually two different gaming series uh, combined into one. Uh, I'm not really sure if it was an anime or something like that. But either way, game is fantastic. Uh, you could kinda, It kind of reminds me of old school SNK games, like kind of like uh, during the middle of SNK's life cycle. Game is really solid, and it only came out in PAL in Japan territory, so a lot of people didn't really get to see this game, unfortunately. Um, but now I'm telling you about it now. If you see this game, definitely pick it up. It's available on the PSP. And remember, the PSP is region-free, so uh, you can play it on that. 
Uh, if you get it on PS2, uh, you have to get the Japanese or the PAL version, so make sure you have the means to play those. But like I said, the PSP is region free. And if you want to play on a television, you can just hook the PSP. If you have a Model 2 or 3, you can hook it up to your television and play off the television like that. It, it plays well. Definitely pick this game up, guys, because um, they don't make fighting games like they used to anymore. And this is one of the ones that are, I would consider a true hidden gem. Next, we're going to talk about Astra Superstars for the Sega Saturn. Astra Superstars is an awesome aerial-based fighting game with a lot of character. Astra Superstars is an awesome 2D flight-based fighting game or airborne fighting game. I don't know. You fly around with a bunch of characters in the air, uh, but it's really cool. I actually did a review on this one on my channel as well, so make sure to go there and check it out. Sunsoft actually put this game together, and before that they made the awesome Waku Waku 7, and before that they made Galaxy Fight, which was not so awesome. The character design in Astro Superstars is incredibly unique, with a decent variation of characters to choose from. Personally, this is one of my favorite 2D fighting games on the Saturn, and I enjoy it a lot. One thing I do have to mention though that this game has gone up exponentially in price, so it might be a little hard to pick up if you're wanting to play an original copy. And unlike other Sunsoft games, Astro Superstars only came out on the Sega Saturn. I highly recommend you find a way to play this game because it is awesome. <laughs> In my last game, um, gosh, unfortunately, this game does not have a physical release, and I've been wanting to have a physical release for a long time. It actually came out for PS3, and it came out for the PS4, an updated version, and they're working on a sequel for it. This game is called Chaos Code, and then there's Chaos Code, New Sign of Catastrophe. Now, Chaos Code... Uh, Man, this game is so freaking cool. I, I can't believe it doesn't have a physical release. So, what I read about Chaos Regular Code, excuse me, it was actually um, made in Taiwan, and uh, they had been working on it for a couple, well, quite a few years, and they finally got it out. Um, just a really, just amazing game, uh, and, and a lot of people don't know about it. It's unfortunate, but Arc Systems helped uh, publish it, and hopefully they'll get the name out there better. But I got. Like like most fighting games, guys, it's, it's got to have a physical. Well, any game in general, you got to have a physical release to get the word out. Usually, unless the game is just, I mean, it just really catches the trend like Street Fighter has over the years. But either way, guys, a solid game. Uh, great 2D animations, um, great soundtrack, uh, lots of cool extras, uh, interesting characters to play from. It's just, man, it's just, it's just, this game is such a throwback for me, and it's definitely uh, probably my favorite on this list. For my next game, we're going to go ahead and show you Melty Blood Act Cadenza for the PS2. Melty Blood originally started off as a fan-made fighting game by a small circle called French Bread. Now, the original Melty Blood uh, featured six characters, and they're based on the Tsukihime series, or Moon Princess, as it would be known in English. Now, as far as the gameplay is concerned, Melty Blood has some really tight gameplay. All your normal stuff like uh, supers and uh, special moves and cancels. I still have trouble with the advanced aspects of the game like uh, shielding and the magic circuit system. It's got aerial recoveries, all the normal stuff that you would see in fighting games. One cool thing about the game is that when you pick a character, each character has three different fighting styles. You've got uh, full moon, half moon, and crescent moon. And depending on what you pick, it, it switches things up like how the characters use their EX shielding or the magic circuit uh, and then some moves vary a little bit depending on the character that you're using. The game itself has something like 20 plus characters in it uh, with many of them being variations of other characters but those variations play wildly different from each other. Melty Blood Act Cadenza for the PS2 features a lot of great music good old-fashioned 2D sprite work, which not enough games are doing nowadays, and a fighting game system that everyone can get into. I'm a big fan and I highly recommend Melty Blood to any fan of 2D fighting games. Oh, 
わってみる All right, guys. So, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Sar Mara for helping me do this video. Hopefully, we'll do more videos like this in the future for you guys if you guys、uh, enjoyed this one.、Uh, but mostly, I want you guys to check out his channel.、Uh, a lot of import stuff on there, lots of current gen stuff as well. It's just a real interesting channel for you guys to find out more information about certain games. Some of you may not know this, but DJ is actually the creator of f x Unit Yuki,、uh, a game I'll be doing a review on pretty soon. So, pretty excited for that. I will leave a link、uh, in the description to his channel, so be sure to check it out. And、uh, that's all I have for you guys.、Uh, Radical Reggie and Sarmaro, and we will see you guys later.